trouble. Here comes the danger sent by the savior. Welcome. The one and the only trouble himself. I start to crew. Soldiers with a capital T. Like Toti. My brother, the one and the only Mr. Daryl Duku. Good evening, bro. How you doing this evening? Oh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Daryl Duku, you there, brother? Yeah, man, I say I'm ready to burn down the place. Burn down the place? No, 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 man. Not my place. You can burn down anywhere else. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. Everything is nice here. A little rainy. Again, more rain in Trinidad, boy? Yeah, boy. I, I, we're supposed to be in dry season, but we're getting a little couple of showers. Well, everything is better wet, right? So that's a good thing, then. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So, But, Daryl, I got to say, you know, once again, thank you very much for your hospitality, your kindness, everything. You know, when I... When I come to Trinidad, it's a uh, real quick thing, but uh, he is real treat me uh, good, man. Thank you very much, brother. Alan, we like family. Why is you keep doing that all the time? I would always do that for you. I really appreciate it. No, so, serious. So that you, don't, you don't say thank you to family, okay? Well, I have to make sure that I let everybody know that all your efforts that you do, I greatly appreciate it, and thank you very much. So, you know, I mean, like I said, that we, we dipped in real quick, and we dipped out even quicker. But, um, you know, the next trip to Trinidad and Tobago... It's for the big day, the big day, March 30th. How are you feeling about that? Boy, listen, people don't know. That night is going to be epic, you know. People, um, I noticed somebody has the transvestite using the term epic. We telling everybody our show will be epic. I see she did an art for her show and say it's going to be epic. <laughs> uh, get out of here. We going to be, your jaw going to drop. Some people will be, the show will finish and they'll be sitting in the chair and wondering what the fuck they just saw. Yeah, but this is what I... I can't wait because the excitement is there. Your fans in them, a lot of people. We even have people, you know, those guys in them say they're flying in from all over. So, you know, it's really, 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 it's something that I can't wait for it to happen, brother. I can't wait. And, you know, I know this is something that you've dreamt about. And like I said, you know, I played a song earlier. I don't know if you got to listen, but I know on that night, you're going to be the happiest man alive once you hit that stage and it's on. I am going to do some things that night. I, I mean, I told you on Amelia when you got here, what to expect. So you know, Alan, this is going to be the mother of all shows. Oh, yeah. So I think Trinidadians or anybody have ever seen a comedy um, show, stand-up comedy show, as what we plan to put on. This is going to be unbelievable. And that's what we can't wait. We can't wait, can't wait. And, you know, I know one of the things... Um, that we talked about is uh, giving away some tickets. So we're going to work something out a little bit later. We already gave away um, two tickets so far last week. Gave away some t-shirts and thing. So we got a lot of things in the works in regards to bringing this to a next level. You know, the um, tickets are 250 right now. Tickets are going to be going up. Once the, those tickets are done, I think uh, just under 80 or left. Go to Center of Excellence. The ticket booth is there. Check out Sharon. Buy your tickets because once that goes up, it's going to go up. If you're coming from the States, um, you need to call Sharon so that she keeps your ticket. Or call Alan and Alan will give us the list. There you go. So we know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let us know if you're really coming from the States to the show. We don't want you to get at the door that night and we can't let you in. Right, exactly. So link me up on Facebook. Tune in anywhere. You know, link me, link me, link me, link me. So Daryl. I know um, yesterday, sorry, this weekend was uh, International Women's Day. I was supposed to be in Guyana for that event uh, with the Cadver group, but, um, you know, things didn't end up happening. But, you know, I know this weekend um, you put some information out there in regards to sentimental things that end up happening that acknowledge women and the strength of women that's uh, been going on, right? You know, um... Before we get to that nice mushy stuff, I want to cuss a little bit. <laughs> um, I went I went out today and I a, a guy walked up to me and he said, um, it is a pleasure to meet you, Daryl Duku. And I said, um, oh yeah, really? Are you sure you're talking to Daryl Duku? And he said, yes, yes, you have to be the man. Um, so I smiled and I said, yes. He said, can I talk to you? I said, well, sure, you're talking to me, continue. Mm-hmm. He said, Darl, I want to let you know that I think you're quite awesome and that you're a born leader. And, and the Holy Spirit is telling me that you're a born leader. I said, so you're a Christian. He said, yes, I am. 
He asked about what church you're going to. It's something about head, stone or tomb, stone or church of Christ, tomb, stone or head. So some bullshit like that. Anyway, um, may have mocked the man I listened to the man, Alan, but um, he was trying to make a point okay. of um, saying that, um, you know, he thinks that I have more in me to let my videos evolve into something a little more beautiful. I said, so what is beautiful? He said, well, Darrell, you know, if you put some clothes on and stop cussing and um, talk a little less about sex, maybe you would get more viewers. I said, bro, I have four million viewers. <laughs> How much fucking more viewers do you want me to get? I don't know what more you need. He said, so he reached the point where he started to tell me, Alan, that, um, you know, um, I don't believe that um, women should, should take important roles. I say, hold up. You're trying to tell me that uh, Kamala shouldn't be prime minister. He said, no, 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 no. Kamala shouldn't be prime minister. So we should have ne never allowed that. No, I have to stop him right there. So I say, um, what, what happened? You don't believe that women should have leading roles? Like bankers and teachers and prime ministers and parliamentarians and so on, lawyers and all of that. No doubt the, the, the woman, woman um, God doesn't design women. To, I said, look, what the fuck are you really trying to tell me? What? So, so he, he said, I can't believe they still have dotish people so that still believe a, a woman's place is in the home. Um, I, for one, can't put up with that. Now, granted, I am I'm upset with Kamala Prasad Bissa as Prime Minister of Trinidad Tobago. I am upset for different reasons. It has nothing to do with her being a woman. I was very proud to go out and support her when she came in. Alan, I said, yes, it's got to do with a woman prime minister, man, a different touch. Um, I didn't expect um, some of the bullshit she did, but overall, she was all right. Uh, it was nice having her as prime minister. Having her as prime minister, which means she's probably on her way out. Eh? Right. Anyway, we ain't going there tonight. But um, my point is, I was proud to know that we have a woman prime minister. Or, um, 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 it is nice to see that we respect women that way. I still can't believe in this day or uh, at age, we're still talking bullshit about women shouldn't have leading rules. So, so I told him, Alan, if they are not good to be prime ministers, women that is, not good to be teachers and doctors and lawyers. Then they're not good to fuck either. Well, the, bro, let me tell you, to, to take that kind of I, mindset. Well, mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. So, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm getting excited and I'm cutting it. But um, <laughs> I think what I think he should do is that um, he, he shouldn't have sex with these women because um, what he should do is look for a man that is, uh, is as equal as him. Um, in, in structure and in education and in beliefs and fuck with that man. Maybe that's exactly what he so needs. <laughs> that's probably right. Your land, but I'm really upset this evening. I'm very sorry. I am all for women's rights. And um, that fuck of bullshit this man is talking, I am, I am not subscribing to that. And I, I am sure there are a lot of ladies here tonight backing me up. Well, yes, there's... A, there's um, look, I just saw that... Uh Sweetest little moi, moi said, uh, you know, wow, that's so nice hearing that from Daryl. Way to go, Daryl. Um, you know, and I, as I don't know if a lot of these, a lot of our listeners know this, but um, I'm part of a group that's called CADVA, which is the Caribbean American Domestic Violence Awareness Group Association that's here in the, in the States. And uh, I'm very active in regards to, you know, women's rights and domestic violence, uh, making people more aware of that. And... Um, Highly, highly in agreement with what you're saying, Daryl. As well, you know, I'm the father of a daughter. And for, for people to have this kind of dotishness mindset, as well as retarded thinking, you know, that's, that's preventing my daughter from excelling in life. And that shit, I don't go with, bro. I, I don't support that 100. Uh, I don't support that at all. You know, I've been lucky enough that I have a, a very strong woman who, you know, and Amelia that... She does a she does a lot of things and she does a uh, you know Daryl and in regards to support and working and everything like that and you know she does her TV stuff and and this is what women deserve that chance just as anybody else in regards to excel in what they want to do 
You know, Kamala, yeah, she might be going through some lulls and stuff like that in the country, but what she has, what what she was given to where the country is now, Daryl, we have to admit a lot of good things that end up happening. Um, you know, it's she's, you know, I guess she got a little too comfortable within her five years, and that's why all this other kind of stuff is going on now. But really and truly, from what she was handed to what is what the country is at now, it it is night and day. You know, I, I want to, um, a lot of people talking about um, International Women's Day. I mean, it was just Sunday gone. Sunday gone, yes. Um, but I want, to, I want to talk about the phenomenal woman. Uh, let me explain what is a phenomenal woman. Um, men will seem to understand the, the gift from God for a woman. Eh? Uh, a woman comes into your life, Alan. You should know what I talk A woman could make you or break you, and you, you are divorced. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Woman could mm-hmm. could could spoil your your entire career, your life, your marriage, your 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 whole turn your whole life upside down. And then there are women that will come into your life and um and and bring value to what you have and build on what you have. And they would come with you, Alan, and spend ten years with you. And by the time when you check yourself, you have new cars and you have you move you've moved on in life business wise and you have children and that kind of thing. That is a phenomenal woman. A phenomenal woman takes care of her children. She's a mother. I there were times, Alan, I hats off to my mommy tonight, Rosina Duku. I want to say hats off to her for one reason. There were times, Alan, I will never forget we had a mortgage. My mom bought a, but built a very beautiful house. And uh, when she built her house, um NAR came in and stopped the cooler and you remember they they, they added on VAT and they dropped everybody's salary. She was a teacher and in those days it was only a three thousand dollars or something like that she was making. And her mortgage was a lot of money. I think it was seventeen hundred a month on this new house. It was wow. a nice, very big house. And Alan, when she paid mortgage, because my dad wasn't working for any big thing, he was in ministry, he was a reverend and he did I mean people it, men of the cloud don't really make money well like Honest people like my father, that'd be set like coffee and then driving fucking Ben. <laughs> my father never make no money. Mm-hmm. Alan, we didn't know that we were not eating right because mommy made it sure that we had hot food on the table. We didn't know that rice and dal and, and, and chicken liver wasn't good food. We didn't know that rice and lentils and, and, and beef liver wasn't good food. As far as, far as I concerned, it was tasting so good. My mother used to buy back and neck and cook rice and curry alu and back and neck and you'll lick in the plate, Alan, because yeah. <laughs> she made sure the meals were good. That is a phenomenal woman. You, we didn't know that we were catching we ass. All we know is mommy put hot food on the table. Men need to learn to respect the woman that, that, that make, take nothing in the kitchen and make something. When you come from work, you get something hot to eat. Your house clean. Your children cared for and clean. Listen, I will say it again because this, this spark right back and on my wall. Mm-hmm. Saturday gone, that's the day before International Women's Day. I have an aunt who has Alzheimer's. I told you about her already, Alan. Yes. Uh-huh. And we go and we sit in her house. She has a shop. And we go and we would buy stuff to eat and then we buy pizza or whatever. And we go there and we set chairs out in the yard. Now she's facing a savannah and the school. And we would put plastic chairs out on the pavement and we would, after we done it, and we would line for hours because this, the light in the savannah light up the whole community. So we would sit there and, and we would start conversations to prompt my aunt's memory. So we would talk about my grandparents who's dead and gone and that kind of thing and, and make conversation uh, so that we could, um, we could get her to jolt her memory. We sit in there and Marva, who is a soldier, she's a neighbor about three houses down. I see Marva with this little Indian child. Now, bear me. Marva is a big black Negro woman. Eh? She's a Negro woman. And I have to say hats off to that whole family because I know them from small. And them people love Indian. I don't know why. Got you. All right. You all right, Daryl? Yeah. Hey, I'm good. I'm quarreling too much tonight. Um... This girl, uh, I saw her picking up this little child from the uh, from the savannah, and um, she she walked in, walked in front past walked past in front of me, and I say, "Mother, you kidnapping children now, girl?" And she stopped to laugh. 
And like she didn't want to tell me what she was going to do. And the little man, he looked like about three years old. And he said, Nan, Nanti gonna me go in bed. He could barely talk. She she was taking him Alan to give him a bath. Now apparently the parents don't care too hoot about if he bed or if he ain't bed. Mm-hmm. When mother comes from work and she has time, she takes him up. Take him down. This is a pure Indian child. Eh? Takes him to her house. Make sure he eat. Give him a bath and curl up the little hair and clean him up and powder him up and kiss him up and bring him back out the road. When he come out, Alan, the boy smelling sweet. <laughs> I said, Papi, you bathe. Auntie bathe you. He said, yes, I bathe. I belly full. Hmm. You telling me that is not a phenomenal woman? That is not her child? She hmm. has no relation to that child? And what to begin is not even from her race. She don't see race. That whole family, I know them, they don't see race. And she makes sure that this child gets a bath and gets something to eat. Phenomenal women. Exactly. Those are the women we have to say hats off to. Those are the women that make you alone or break you. Those are the women that takes care of your children. Those are the women that runs and um, builds a community. Those are the women who brings up children in a village. And and you're right. You're, no, bro, you're right because you see the thing is, is when you do for others and without looking for anything in return, because there are those women that are out there that don't want nothing in return except you being happy. You understand? And um, I've been through that. I have my my mom's sister. My mom is phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. My, I love my mom to death. As a matter of fact, tomorrow is going to be my mom's birthday. She's going to be seventy-one tomorrow. Uh, I love, and she's a very sickly woman. As a matter of fact, she had four kids when, at a very young age, she had one of her lungs removed due to asthma, and uh, you know, and she still ended up having kids beyond. And, and the doctors don't even know. And she's lived uh, a third life and stuff. And uh, my aunt, her, her sister, moved in with us back in the eighties, and um, Auntie Monica, all the time, every time, you know, whatever we want to eat, she's a phenomenal cook. If my mom is somewhere or doing, you know, we, we grew up in the temple and my mom was very active in it. And uh, my Auntie Monica cooking, cleaning, making sure we have our clothes. If my mom and dad go on a trip, my Auntie Monica is the one staying with us. You know, all these different, up to this day, if I call Auntie Monica, she works in a, a sporting goods store in New York. I, and, um, you know, any team that wins the Super Bowl or World Series or whatever, boom, we have a hat, we have a shirt, we have a whatever. You know, and no hesitation. And Auntie Monica's always like that. As well as if I go to New York to visit, that lady make aloo roti better than... I don't know anybody that can make aloo roti like her. You lick your fingers. You lick the, the napkin. You understand? And she, she is a phenomenal woman. Even though she never had any kids, she never married. But one of the things with her was always our happiness is what meant more to her than anything. And, you know, that, that's what... So I was blessed to... To grow up in a home with two mothers, where there's Auntie Monica and there's also my mom. But there are these ladies that th- they're a dying breed because women today and girls today, you know, they care about Facebook, they care about their phones, they care about messaging, they care about this, they care about that. So uh, it makes you wonder will they care about that next human being? You know, where are we going today? Where are these kids going today? Alan. You know what is my problem or biggest, uh, 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 why I'm so upset tonight? We are losing respect for women in a very uh, large way. Um, uh, children don't respect their parents anymore. Husbands not respecting their wives anymore. Mm-hmm. We as people growing up in the community not respecting our women elders anymore. Something is wrong with, I don't know if it happened in your country, but something is wrong with fucking Trinidadians and respect. Um, it is a sad state. Um, you know, I know, Alan, um, let me tell you, in my area where I grew up, I'm so ashamed to tell you that I don't know the people need because you're walking home from school and everybody is tanti and uncle. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I am a big man now and they still call everybody tanti and I'm ashamed to ask some of them old ones their name because we never knew their name. It's just tanti, you know, she for. The tanti in the yellow house, the tanti in the board house, the tanti in the upstairs house, who the sell the tulum. We don't know the people's name, boy. Right, I know. Because of the respect you call them tanties, when they're dead and 
Now they're dead, Alan, and when you go to the funeral, you get the, the, the uh, you know, you get, you get the program, right? Mm -hmm. And then you would hear the name, the woman is whatever, whatever, or, or the man is whoever, whoever. And you say, oh, that's the name. We even know the people there for years, you're calling them Tanti and Uncle, out of respect. You're not mm -hmm. seeing that again. Somebody sent me a video today of a man horse-skying a woman. You saw it? Yeah, that's some... Shh, boy. I tell you... I Sometimes Facebook, I just, I doesn't want to go on Facebook, especially on a Tuesday, right? Because when you know, I know we we like to make sure that we get to the points that we want to talk about, but then you see some sort of dotish retardedness that just pisses you off in regards to what the hell is going on in the world that we live in. I have to wonder, Alan, if, um, first to begin, if, if, uh, did you look at the video? No, I didn't, because I just read the comment about a man tie up the woman and that they should do this to them. I said, brother, if I only see that, that shit, no, <laughs> I, I don't know what state I'm going to be. For the, you know, as I was hype, I was in a good mood. I think if I watched that video today, <laughs> I would have been in a good mood this evening. Boy, it's about 60% in the video. Oh, huh. And um, I just started to watch it, and in the first few seconds, I had to take it off because it comes back to respecting women. You went, this jackass went and take the woman from her house and tie her up because her husband stole pepper from his pepper field. She did what? Oh, wait, wait, hold on, wait. Alan? Repeat that again. She did what? Man. Mm hmm. I have the woman because her husband stole pepper, pepper, hot peppers, uh -huh. from his, his garden. So he ain't find the man, so he take the man's wife and tie up. Now let me tell you something, I could have thief pepper, I could have thief money, I could have thief your car, brother. If I come and see you disrespecting my wife, so I'll learn, is boy, licks tell you something. What is jail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree with you, brother. It's jail for that person. You can't, you can't do that. To, uh, that that's some stupidness, man. Sometimes I just have to wonder, Alan, if some of those things are not staged because it, it can't be real. Some of them think it can't, it's too stupid to be real, Alan. For Pepper? Are you freaking kidding me? It, it's, I just wonder if these videos, if some, you know, they, they just try to do that to get views so they, they make up because... I don't know. It ain't making sense. Some of them think, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah. But these videos you're watching and you just have to ask yourself, what are you asking, really looking at? Yo, bro, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It, it's... Hmm. Here's what, Dara, let, let, me, let me go through and read some of the, the... We got a lot of messages and comments and stuff like that. So I know you... Okay. you I think you need something to drink, so let me uh, go through this quickly. I, yeah. I drink this up there, actually. I talk, I talk I, I know. I figured that, um, you know, so we got Sweetest Little Mars in the building. Uh, you know, Trini Mia is up inside here as well as we boy, you know, uh, Curtis, DJ Rum Singh, who's coming to um, who's coming to Trinidad. We know that. We know he's coming to Trinidad. Uh, the girls and them reach back, man. It's good to see them. Um, Fazia Ali and uh, we have Annie. They're out here. Um Let's see. Uh, let me see here. Let's see. Uh, Jesse's in the. Jesse's here tonight from Canada. I know she's probably freezing from up there. Um, you know, some people are saying happy birthday to my mom. Thank you all very much for expressing those. Um, as well as, let me see. There was some somebody had wrote something about. Um, oh, here's. Um, she wrote. Where is it? Sweetest little Ma says, I do not provoke, promote violence, but Lord Father, God forgive me because that, that was about um, the guy who tied up um, who tied up the, uh, what do you call it? Who, who tied up the woman, you know? And that how Fazia says that that man needs a good beating and stuff like that. Um, you know, like we said, the girls in them, oh, Taquana, we know she, oh, she wants a shirt for her mother. We're going to see about that. But... Um, Definitely, the the whole rum posse they said is up inside of there and thing. But this is what we we see some real stupidness that ends up happening in regards to our world out there. And 
I don't know how somebody would have the belly to take some a next person's child, right? Or like you said, a, a wife of a next man and do that kind of shit to them. This is this is crazy, bro. It comes down to all that I've been saying, Alan. There's no respect for women. Let me tell you something. Eh? I, in my life, I have experienced um, what it is to have a good woman. Um, for those who don't know, my wife is Annie. I know I'm not gay. We will talk about that at the end of the show. <laughs> I, love, I am a lesbian. I love pussy. So you have to drop um, the disclaimer. Those, okay. Those to me, they would know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anne-Marie, my wife, of 15 years, uh, um, August 2000, we got married. So this year is going to make it 15 years of happy uh, you know, uh, marriage. My son is 11. So four years after, we had David, of my son. Let me tell you something, Alan. My wife is moved like a real Indian wife. Let me explain. My wife is a teacher. Yes. 7 a.m. in my house. Every day, Monday to Friday, 7 a.m., you could come in my house and get hot lunch. Rice and lentil and stew pork. <laughs> Rice and provision and dal and whatever. Right. And curry chicken and this. Listen to me. Every day, my wife cooks lunch and breakfast before she goes to school. Why? She don't eat box lunch. She don't eat the people children lunch. She carry her lunch. That's one. Two, David don't eat the people box lunch either. So Annie has to cook for him every day, put his lunch together with his juice and his water and snack and fruit. Same thing she does for herself and put it in her car and we drop David to school and she goes to school in her car. And my point to you is by 7 o'clock there's food in my house. <laughs> uh, that's a phenomenal woman. A woman, my girlfriend, say, I ain't been an hour anymore. And Annie gets up at five every morning and cook. My house is always spotless. I always would say, because David is doing SCA, which is the replacement for common entrance, for him to go up in a, a secondary school. He is almost finished at the primary level. And um, right now, I am in one room talking to you, Alan, and Radio Land. Right. And they're in the other room um, doing test papers. David is being briefed for exams in the next two months. If David passed for a good school, Alan, I can't jump up and say it was my doing. It was a phenomenal job by Anne-Marie because she spends all the time with him, Alan, to make sure he eats properly, he goes to lessons, he goes to swimming to relax, comes back and does the test papers. She preps him, she helps him with what he doesn't know. He is being prepped for this exam solely by Anne-Marie. She has dedicated since last year. Her whole life is David being prepared for this exam. I can't take any credit for it. And that's what I'm saying. When you find a good woman, a good thing, like a good woman like mine, to fucking keep it. Right, exactly. Exactly. And congratulations on that. You've been, respect. You've been lucky. Huh? I said congratulations on that. You're very lucky. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people think she's Negro because I, um, they think I, I side with the Negro people. No, I'm really pure <laughs> Indian. She was Amri Mohammed before, eh? Indian. Oh, yeah. So the people who think Daryl White black, no, Daryl just love black people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's pure Indian. Anybody want to see a picture, I'll put it up on Facebook. Paul, it is she's pure Indian. Nah, there's no need um, for that. Let them, pe uh, you know what? And <laughs> that's like a next thing, right? People just make up shit when they don't know something. You understand? Like I said, my, mo Alan. my mom don't have Facebook. You understand? My mom don't listen to the show because uh, in regards to the content that we have. She don't listen to the Daryl show. Right? Nor does she listen to In Bed. But, you know, she gives Amelia jokes because she hears she's a therapist. Right? So, um, but the thing is, somebody goes back and they told my mom, you know, with the whole uh, Kamala thing. You love black people. You want Rowley in there. Blah, blah, blah. And thing, and that is the reason why is because your wife is uh, black, <laughs> and that just, that wow. shit just cracks me up. Because and you know, and when when she messes, when she says that, you know, one of the things that I, I I definitely say, one of the things that I definitely say to her, because even today she mentioned she mentioned that again. I said I said uh, to her, I said, "Mom, the person who knows Daryl better than me to say that his wife is black." Go find out from them. Don't ask me. I don't know Daryl <laughs> that well as as well as they know as well as they know him because I know what Daryl is do for me and Amelia and stuff. When we come there, I've spoken to his wife. I've seen many pictures of his wife, but this, since this person 
by listening to the radio show, knows more about Daryl than anybody. Let him tell you Daryl's story, right? That's what I just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. In his case, whoever that person is, he actually mm. is pure nigger. Big black nigger. <laughs> That's what I told him. It was a funny thing, Alan. Yeah. Um, what, what is pissing me off? I have been getting all kind of hate mail, death threats. Recently, somebody from the UNC threatened me. Um, and I would just try to make this clear. It's not that I don't like Kamala. You know, I have a lot of respect. As I started off the show tonight, I said um, I cussed a man today because he said he don't like the idea of, um, of a woman prime minister. I have a lot of respect for Mrs. Kamala. Um, I have a lot of respect for women in power. I have a lot of respect for UNC. But the problem is I talk without fear or favor. If you do something wrong, True Talk is a show that is designed by We Think Radio and Alan and myself. We give you the facts. Whether you like it, we're not supporting anybody. We're not supporting any party. No. We're not supporting any one person. We're not supporting any race. We are supporting the truth, and we're giving you the facts as we see it. Exactly. Now, Get that straight. Now, we are afraid to say what we need to say. And that will continue happening on the show, unless Alan put me out. No, 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 but, but here's what, hold, sweetest, little, sweetest little more, we're not saying there's anything wrong if Daryl's wife was black. What we're saying is, is the fact that it doesn't matter, Daryl's opinion or anybody's opinion has nothing to do with, uh, with if you're married to a black person, you're married to an Indian, you can be married to a friggin' Chinese, it don't matter. You know what I'm and then to make up different things. So that, that's only what our point is. We're not saying that there's anything wrong if Daryl's wife was black. The thing that we're saying is Daryl's view has views on anything has nothing to do with the next thing. It's just how he feels and what's going on and what's what's right and what's wrong in regards to his perception. And like we said, people make up this crap when they don't know, and that's that's the next thing. You know, you live in Trinidad, Daryl. No I don't live in Trinidad. Alan, this is no. Sorry, sorry, yeah. This is now leading to, to the topic that we were heading for, which ha happens to be. Um, we, so funny, eh? perception and how we treat people because of different things. One is our sexual preference, and two, our, our race is two issues that we have in the world today. I, let me give you Radio Land this story. I inbox 15 people while Alan was in Trinidad because I was bored. Alan <laughs> came to Trinidad and spent all his time with Raymond Ramnarain and didn't spend any time with me. I had to hold them down in the airport to eat some royal castle and talk shit for two hours and he cut road on me. I ain't even seen Alan leave. What? Alan for two hours. I have no... Yeah. Me and when Alan leave the country. I only... Yeah. Um, I know that Alan left because my car came back. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the whole point is Yes, Alan, you know me, right? For the, for the three days. Yes, the, I didn't see you. The whole right. point is, you know, um, I spoke to 15 people and said, listen, I think I buy, you know, and I, I, might, I might really think I want some gay sex. And um, I wouldn't mind fucking a cock. And it <laughs> went on like that. And funny enough, the people who raise the red flags and say that they have to delete us, Alan, and they don't want to be a fan of Daryl again, um, that person was pushing the point and asking so he would sleep with a guy. And the questions he was asking was what, making me wonder if um, he was also gay. Now, the funniest thing is, as I said before, I'm a lesbian. I love cats. Um, <laughs> yes. We were just doing that. I wanted to see what was the response. Eleven people said, Darrell, it doesn't matter if you're gay, you're straight, you're trisexual, you're bisexual, you're you be bisexual, you like dog, whatever. It does not matter. We love you as a person. We love your comedy and we love your point of view. Four people out of the 15 said, we're going to delete you. We don't ever want to hear you again. You're disgusting. And my point is to you people tonight. Um, we have so many hang-ups against black people, Negro people. I am... Um, uh, you will feed them and you could be friends with them. Whatever Nico man says he wants, uh, as an Indian, want to marry your daughter. You get vexed. You don't want that. Right. Or how do you feel um, if your dad or your brother or your best friend or your cousin or your nephew come and tell him he's gay? What you going to do? Delete them from Facebook like you delete me and stop talking to them and stop being a fan of your dad or your brother or your friend because he's gay or because he's black or because he's Hispanic? Or Latino, we have too much fucking hang-ups, Alan. 
And, and, and this is what's very sad with the world, but it also makes it very uncomfortable for that person. Remember, like I told you, Daryl, I had a story. My cousin, love him very much. We grew up, to, well, I mean, I grew up in New York, and they was born and raised in Trinidad, right? So I, I've only seen them very scarce. And usually when we go to Trinidad was somebody passed away and things like that. But when I started going more, you know, got to line my cousins and them. And my cousin was gay. I always heard the stories and stuff like that, but he himself... Never came to me and told me. Now, Daryl, you see my size. I'm a big man, right? I'm bigger than a lot of a lot of the people in them, uh, my family in them, right? Now, my cousin was always scared to tell me this. He's been married for 15 years to his partner, who is a phenomenal guy, man. Let me tell you, because I always hear the stories, right, about about themselves, how what they do, and things like that, what they've accomplished and thing. And it's only last year, in their 14th year, when I went to Trinidad. And he says, Alan, I have something to tell you. I want you to meet somebody. Now, I never met the guy before. I've only seen the pictures. And, whatnot. and they don't even take pictures together, right? And stuff like that. But he said, I, um, I have to let you know something that I'm gay. I said, yeah, I know. He goes, what? You know? What do you mean you know? <laughs> right? I said, um, I said, bro, everybody talks. You understand? Everybody in the fr- in family talks. But whatever you do, all I care is one thing. Are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy. I said, all right, so that's good. Why didn't you want to tell me? He goes, I thought you would have been mad. I said, bro, I love you. There's nothing for me to be mad about because if people with wives today is not friggin' happy and you're happy with a man, bro, I wish you the best of friggin' luck because life is too short to be unhappy. It doesn't matter if you find it in a, in a, in a dog, in a cat, in a man, in a woman or whatever. You have to be happy in this short amount of time we have here in this world. And he hugged me. He cried. He kissed me. And every time I speak to him and I see him, we, I tell him I love him and whatnot and as long as they're happy. And I hate the, the fact that, you know, if I make a crack about him on Facebook or whatever, right? He'll be like, Alan, you got to take it down. People in my job don't know. You know, he lives in Trinidad. And this is the thing. People, they still live in that kind of fear and they can't get to live comfortable. What kind of shit is that? Let people enjoy the little bit of time they have here. You don't know when you're going to go. You have no clue. You have no idea. And, and this, is, this is the shit that has pissed me off where people with their stereotypes and their, you know, fear of something that they don't know and, and whatnot, you know? You know, Alan, um, it all comes down to the fact, I don't know how other people think, but I am not, and Alan, you know, I'm not a racial person. I don't see people for their color and their sexual person. I see you as a person, Alan. I see you, I don't, when I look at you, I say, Alan is an Indian, or Amelia is an Indian. I see you as my friend. Uh, we do business together as a friend. We, 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 uh, we sing radio, I will never forget the night when we sing with radio um, was born. Two o'clock in the morning. You remember that? <laughs> right, yes. Uh-huh. Right. We think radio was born two o'clock in the morning. I will never forget that. I will never forget the true conference you and I and Amelia are planning this. And um, it is actually came to pass and we we actually on our own radio station. It is it is phenomenal how people would think, um, how stupid people are to think of um people um because of their color and because of their sexual preference. Listen to me, all of that is none of your fucking business. <laughs> if you want to be my friend, be my friend. You don't need to know if I take man or take dog or have a wife. You don't need to know if I'm Latino, Negro, Indian, Trinidadian, Guyanese. That is not it. A lot of people told me, oh, Daryl, I didn't know um, you're not Guyanese. We, we just thought you were Guyanese because you were on radio. I said, no, Alan is not Guyanese. Amelia is not. I am not. We, Alan was just working with them, and that's how we got on the station. We're not Guyanese. Um, and we have no hang up to that. I have no problem. I have friends who are guys. I have friends who. Those things are not issues. I don't know why people keep labeling people, Alan. That shit is nonsense. Yeah, exactly. It has to stop if we want to move forward as a, as a universe, as a society. We, we need to stop the crap, man. Exactly. None of your business. The whole issue, you know what it is tonight? Live and let live. And everything else is none of your fucking business. I, I agree, bro. I 100% agree. Also, you know, like in regards to what you were saying earlier, um, one of the things with people with this, this uh, 
you know, stereotypes and things like that, you know, it doesn't affect you in any way. Like, Daryl, you're professional. You could, you could lick a dildo. You're, you're, you're a boss at that. We saw the video. You understand? It doesn't <laughs> matter to me that you're a professional at that. You understand? So, you know, what you excel in, you yeah, excel really in. <laughs> what you said? I'm good. I'm really good. Yes, you're really good. You are really good. I, I can imagine that if you go to a gay fest, they're going to love you when they see that video. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Listen, some of my best friends here, so, you know, and some of my... And the thing is, I'm ashamed to tell you, Alan, you must be the only Indian partner I have. <laughs> yeah, probably. And, and, uh, no, 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 I have two more. Uh. Fazad, Mohammed, and um, um, Farid. Mm. Farid and Fazad, they're both Mohammeds. They're the only... Uh, you three are the only Indian partners I have. Everybody else will lie around me black. <laughs> I don't like... No, I really wish I like coming to that, those things. Yeah, I, I like more black people than Indian people. I find Indian people like too much of black. They, they do. Uh, look, look, look. <laughs> when they go and tell your mother that Daryl have a black woman. Yeah, so see? what if Daryl have a black woman? Black woman have beautiful pussies. There you go. They do. They, I don't. I I don't know, yeah. Daryl. I haven't. I haven't uh, experienced that. So I I don't. I don't know. I know you've been all over the place. Now I know, Daryl. Well, com- if you want to know, if you want to know the difference tonight, I'll tell you. I know this is part of a um, Tuesday night show, but I'll let you have it one time. There's a difference between having sex with an Indian woman and having sex with a, a Negro woman. An Indian woman is lie down like a piece of log and do move. Uh-huh. And you could do what you want with them. And the only time you know that they enjoy themselves is water more than flower. Pipe burst down there. <laughs> and that's how you know they enjoy themselves. With a Negro woman, a Negro woman will hold you. And you ain't whining in Ireland. They control, brother. And they run the show. I have some Negro friends here like Tasha and all of them here. They hold you down, Ireland, and they give you a good, good, good wind down. You ain't good again. No, I, I good, bro, because look, I guess Miss Budu Singh has a lot of Negro in her because she's like that. So, <laughs> you know. But she gets training from them. She probably did. She probably did. So, you know, and Dar- I know, um, like I said, I know we're running out of time, but one of the things that I know you wanted to address before we go is the housing situation in Trinidad. I know we spoke about this. But, but you know, I have said what I had to say on, on my last video blog, and we, we, I think we crossed 25,000 viewers in two days. Now, yes. so, Alan, I go pong the government, eh, and I know, I know a lot of Indian people is vexed with Dar when he pong the government. But um, you have to understand, I will pong Rowley the same way when he comes in um, in September. Of course, we know Rowley is coming back for the rest of all. who do want to believe that, that's fine, this guy, that's all your problems. Um, but I'm saying it very clear tonight, you and see will get their ass well put. Because of the stupidness that they have been doing over and over and over again. Alan, if you drive through my Stanley Grandi area on a Sunday when there's no traffic, of course, during the week, the traffic is so tight that you can't tell because you crawl through Stanley Grandi. But on a normal day, the traffic, uh, like a Sunday morning, I mean, the traffic, everybody's home. So you can actually drive through Stanley. You talk about fucking pothole. You talk about bad road. You know what they're doing now? It's election in the next two months. They started paving hell high and ball all over. They want to pave from every pothole to your asshole. <laughs> what? I am getting fed up. And the thing is, the material that they use in Ireland is the cheapest of the cheapest of the cheapest. It is not, we, own the, we own the lake, asphalt lake, and yet we use it in shit to, to pave the road and patch the road. Listen to me, where I live, they paved half of the road last year. Now they're preparing to pave the other half this year. When they pave the latter half, you know what's going to happen? The first half that they just did, ready to be repaired all over again. Because the, the materials, the work is shoddy. The materials cheap. Um, we get getting no value for money. And there's nobody overlooking these things. I stood up. And listen, Kamala talked for election 10 years, or five years ago when she said these things wouldn't happen. She promised, Alan, that this shit wouldn't happen and it's happening all over again. Where are these, uh, these houses coming from? They have, they're saying that they were building houses before. When you go in and see the houses, Alan, the houses are inferior houses. They're not well done. 
and they're just pushing houses in all the areas where they think they're going to get food. Like, for instance, they're pumping thousands of houses into the, the, the Valencia Tucumantel in an area. Because when they move people into that area, they think people will be grateful enough and vote for them. And they will hold the Tucumantel in a seat. I don't think that would ever happen. People are so disgruntled. How are we going to distribute these houses? We're giving away 100 houses every week. They say they're going to do it by lotto. That's bullshit. We're giving these houses to people. Well, you see, and don't deserve these houses. We're and giving the houses to people that don't deserve the houses. We're giving it. They listen. I hear in foreigners getting house, boy. Bro, I fucking dog in house. I know for a fact. I ain't calling people name because I don't want to put that out there, right? But the thing is, I know for a fact of somebody who I know that does not live in Trinidad. Okay, he does not live in Trinidad, and he was told he's gonna be given a house because he's a singer. You understand? He lives abroad. The man makes his l- livelihood by living in America. He rarely goes back home only to record music and stuff like that. They're giving him a house. There's a next person living in another country and stuff like that. They're giving him a house. Give it to the people who deserve it. Why you? This, this makes zero sense in regards to just giving it wh- however you want or whatever or... Even if you want to say, oh, the family deserves this or whatever, but that's bullshit. There's many people and stuff like that that could probably, you know, encourage them, get them get them a little job, do whatever they can to be self-sufficient. But by giving the people that they want to do it as a rental property or some shit like that, that to me is retardedness, man. You see, the right people not getting these houses. These houses are not designed for that. These are low-income houses that are supposed to go to the poor who can't get a mortgage via the bank but can, can easily qualify for a TPMF loan at 2% down and 3% per annum and get a freaking house. These houses are not for people who are in high positions and can get them and rent them out according to you or fix them up and sell them back and that kind of nonsense. Or it's not be a house a holiday house when you come to Trinidad is bullshit. But you yes. know, the real I tell people, I say, if you want to get a house, eh, Alan, this is what you have to do, boy. If you want to get a house, bond down the one you're living in, carry a children and borrow some extra children and go on Ian Allen. Hmm. And as you go on Ian Allen, the next two hours, Ian is call um, Julian John <laughs> and Kudilal. And Kudilal is get a house for you because you hit TV and it's a public relations thing. All of us are able here. The government felt sorry for Alan and his 10 children and they were given a house. You see? That's what, look, my cousin is I locked on. Bullshit, eh? My cousin is locked on. He said, boy, I, can I get a house too? <laughs> you understand? So larger my cousin, Chris Suknanan, he, he's, a, he's a new listener to you and he loves you, Darrow. But, um... This is what, like, this is the thing. Chris, you know the person who get a house. I'll tell you later if you ask me. But, um, you know, and this is, this is what I mean in regards to other bullshit that's going on. You know, our hashtag WUF, we haven't done that in a while. But um, that's exactly what's going on in regards to it. It is unfair in regards to y- your own people you don't want to take care of, but you want to take care of foreign foreign dele- I don't know what's the word that you want to use for them or whatever but they're, they're foreign nationals that don't want to be in the country because it, if they wanted to be in the country they would have been living there and do like everybody else that sticks it through the thick and thin in regards to supporting your country they didn't do that a lot of people yes they left for better lives for the kids and stuff like that but why should you reap those benefits if you left you know I don't believe in that you see, it all comes down to what I have been saying all the time. It's utter fuckery. That's what yes, it is. That's exactly what it is. Um, you're fighting for votes now. You see, the thing is, Alan, you didn't have to fight for votes if you did what you were supposed to do. Um, with the five years, people pissed off for a reason, you know. Because the thing is, we never asked. You came on a campaign trail and promised to do certain things. You promised that healthcare was going to be better. You promised that the TFID will stop. You promise that the contract given out, people will see, um, or, or you will have transparency with the contracts, and you will have people over them to make sure that the project is over, uh, um, you know, um, that, that is monitored then, Alan, and done the right way. 
all of those things that you promised me, nothing, nothing, not one thing came to pass. And now you're turning around expecting us to vote for you because you're throwing some houses on us and you're fooling all we are, so with damn um, pitch. No, Alan, no. No, don't forget, Saroj wrote a letter. That. That, remember, Saroj wrote a letter that says that they did the laptop, so don't say nothing, Daryl. Don't say nothing. Did what? <laughs> He made sure. I, all I get was a lap dance to them. <laughs> Listen to me. If I'm a certain minister, promise I'll give her a house. If she stuck, he would. So she went to his office, knelt down behind the desk, and sucked the minister's wood. And when she was finished, he tells you she needs to come back in two weeks because she have another form to sign. But it wasn't a form, it was another suck wood. What? <laughs> And that same minister, by mistake, um, he was drunk on a plane, and he ended up squeezing up um, the air hostess' breast. What? And he gets fired. Oh, shit. So she suck wood, she suck wood twice, squared, and uh, um, I think <laughs> she ain't getting house yet in a way. So would she have gotten a corner house or get two houses for two, for two blowjobs? Well, bro... <laughs> The man got fired, so he says me the house. So I think she's getting anything. Or she could say she knows she's stuck a wood. Oh, Lord, I feel bad for the girl, man. Oh, my me God. Me too, because I think she was. She thought she was building a house. <laughs> she was building it brick by brick. Or, you know, you know. Brick, brick, yes. brick by brick. Yes. There you go. <laughs> she, was, <laughs> she was building the house brick by brick. Yes, there you go, bro. No, I mean... Wait. But Alan, my big thing is, I don't know if people don't seem to understand. I hear people bawling, well, you know, I this is on the other side, because you know I just give you on both sides, right? Yes. Uh -huh. a, a, a lot of people say, but, um, you know, Daryl, I have an application in for 15 years now, and I have an application in for 19 years, and I still can't get out what happened. You so fucking dotish. You can't get up and go and get a mortgage. Don't tell me, Alan, you can't get up. I told her, yeah, that's in Royal Castle, uh, what time can she kill herself, love? She yeah. said, Daryl, you're totally right. Why are they can't raise all their ass and go to so 19 years you waiting on an HTC house? Every month, Alan, if you were putting down whatever that mortgage money would have been, if it's 2000 a month, by now, after 19, house, you would have, 19 years, you would have built the house cash because you would have had a couple of hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, sure. So don't give me the bullshit that you're waiting on a government house. None of us, the rest of us, do have government houses. We didn't get any free house or we didn't get any low income houses or low income mortgage. We pay the fucking bank and we pay in a mortgage. I don't know for you all, and I have a 25 year old mortgage. Hmm. But this is, but you see, you said it yourself. Do what you have to do because only you can take care of yourself. You understand? Only you, but you can't, you can't wait for freeness and stuff like that because if you don't go out there and do what's necessary, not, not a damn thing is going to happen. You know, I notice this truth is offending, and a lot of people don't like when we're telling the truth, Alan. Um, mm -hmm. But we will continue in truth talk, uh, um, um, t talking about the things and the facts. I agree that, yes, you need a house, so you're waiting to see the government, or, or you know, or if you get a government house. All right, fine. If you can't get the fucking government house, you're waiting so long. you telling me why you're waiting. You can't save up money and try something. No? No? Nothing you're doing? So you're waiting... So what if you never get a government house? What is going to happen? You're going to continue renting till you die? Or living by your in-laws till you die? No, Alan. Get up and get. Fuck the government and the house. Help yourself. Exactly. Help your damn self. That's for sure. That's for sure. So no, I know, Daryl, we're almost out of time. Pauline sent a message to tell you special good night to you. Um, she sent that message to you there. Um, as well as... Uh, oh, Pauline is a liar, <laughs> <laughs> she's a liar. How is she a liar? How is she a liar? She, she lied and she said she's a hundred percent flesh, and I think she is probably seventy percent flesh, thirty percent plastic. <laughs> I guess uh, on the, her next trip, you're gonna have to find out. Daryl, everybody wants to vote for you for prime minister, Daryl. <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't put me in there at all. If all of a sudden the first thing I'm doing is buy a fucking Range Rover, you think I tell you all that? All and 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 all they going? I am going to thief more than all the rest. All don't put me for prime minister. I warn you all. You sure? I get left. I will buy a Range Rover and I will send one for Alan. And I am going to give Weeping Radio an FM fucking station. Look, um, look, my cousin Chris <laughs> end up telling me. He says if that person would have saved the two thousand dollars a month for the nineteen years. 
They would have had four hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars. <laughs> thank you, for, Alan. You could have been the old cash. Thank you for the math, Chris. Look at that. See what a good cousin I have there. Lodge of Chris Lucknan and Lodge locked on in. Um, he's locked on in in New York right now. But um, you know, look a, a couple other messages. Our government is spending uh, over two and a half billion dollars. Million dollars. That's what Jessica is saying for Canada. For special lights on a bridge. What the hell? Two and a half million dollars for lights on a bridge, Daryl, in Canada. That's crazy. That's the, that's the bullshit happening, eh? She said, oh, they're getting ready for oh, the Panda bullshit. Games. That's why. Everybody's laughing that Daryl's going to be a bigger thief than some of the people that's out there right now. I, I look, I know some people are trying to call in, but, uh, you know, we're going to we're get ready. Calls, we're we're going to take calls on Thursday. Uh, True Talk this Thursday with Amelia... Budu Singh and Daryl Duku. Now, Daryl, um, anything you want to say before we go? We, we know we got a couple more minutes. Here's what. On Thursday, since we didn't get to it today, and I know there was a couple other topics you wanted to get to as well, we'll give away, um, we'll give away two tickets on Thursday. So we'll double it up. Okay. But th- in order to give away the two tickets on Thursday, it's not just you calling. Whatever question that we ask you in regards to the topic of the evening, you got to give an answer, right? I think that's right. fair. I think that's fair. You know, right. so and if you win your ticket over here in the states, you can you can send your ticket for a family member abroad back in Trinidad. Uh, and if Tobago. you could send it for the ticket to a friend or family in Trinidad, um, yeah. just give us the name and we will tell them who, who to go to. Sharon, my assistant, she's at yes. the Center of Excellence every day, and you can collect your ticket. No, but yeah. people who, who who you don't seem to understand, you can't wait for Montana to buy a ticket. Eh? We're almost sold out. Yes, exactly. Um, we're almost sold out. You need to come get your ticket. You can't be calling me. I said, Daryl, hold my tickets. I can't hold your tickets, people. You need to come for your tickets because they're going. Um, and they're going, going, gone. And I don't think we will have tickets to sell on that day. So once you come in and think you're going to get in by the door, no way. We don't have that kind of room. We don't have extra room. We don't have standing room. It's We're seating 900 people. And after that, that's it. And the thing is, as I said before, the show is going to be something that you're totally not used to. Of course, you know the kind of mouth that I have right. and the kind of thing that I is going to say. And there are certain things I want to make very straight that night. So, um, listen, we have a lot of important people coming in. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Rowley, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Warner. I'm trying to get the Prime Minister to come. We'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sending her, um, I'm sending her uh, invitations. If she and Dr. Bissessa comes, I will lecture on how to win the election. <laughs> and um, I will only take a Range Rover. There you go. There you go. One Range Rover. So, all right. Two, you want one, Alan? No, no, no. Well, I mean, yeah, you could probably get the second one for when I come to Trinidad. I have that to drive instead of Jason car and thing like that, you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so here's what, Daryl, thank you very much. So in observance... Of International Women's Day, right, Daryl? I'm gonna drop this too, right? Coming up next, we boy, DJ Ali, straight out of West Palm. So good night to you, Daryl. Good night to everybody locked on to We Ting. Good luck, good night to everybody locked on to We Ting Radio. And for all our ladies, Natural Beauty. We love you all very much. Keep doing what you're doing yeah. because No, I never been someone shy Until I seen the rise Still I had to try Yeah Oh yes Let me get my words right and then approach you. Oh yes Come and I'll treat you like a man is supposed to We ting radio I never have to cry Respect your women no. Oh you yes. know everyone can relate when they find and you know what you gotta do one. And she's royal Yeah So royal And I want her in my life I never know anyone So one of a kind No The way she moves to her own beat She has the qualities Of a queen She's a queen, ooh, ooh, what a natural beauty, no need no makeup to be a cutie, she's a queen, she's a queen, and when they ask what a good woman 